It's wonderful. It's another wonderful day. Mm-hmm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Homemaker Podcast. Hello. I am the Golden Greek Alex Arion. I'm joined, as always, by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, the lovely Monique. Monique, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Fantastic, as you always. You see all the things I'm thinking, me? You're talking about me? Well, who else would I be talking about? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. So, how you doing? I'm great. Good. Yeah, it's been kind Fantastic. of a weird, awesome, busy, fun day. Terrific. Yes. Yeah, so Can't elaborate? Yes, yeah, so you got up early and you went for your walk and then I went for one, like, and the sun was just coming up, like, getting to look at the dawn approach and it was really nice and... Something about a sunrise. Oh, oh I love the sunrise. Yeah. Nothing like a good sunrise. Yes. And then um, I actually just got off the phone with Leslie Fear. Leslie is an author, and she has her own podcast, and she asked me to be on her show as a guest. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool, I think. Yeah. It was really neat. She heard me on Karen Rontowski's podcast, Paranormal Karen. Yeah. I did my 2021 tarot prediction. And she wanted to have me on, so it was really fun. And what did you talk about there? Can you say? Or... Oh, yeah. So by the time this episode comes out, I think, because we're recording on a Monday. What is it? Today's the 18th? Today is the 18th and of January. And so this episode, she's putting up for this Wednesday, the 20th of okay. January. Okay. So by so. the time this is this comes out, uh, her show will have already aired. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've but got tongue-tied there for a second. It's okay. So. Yeah, but um, we talked about my tarot predictions. I pulled more cards, like clarity cards, just for more information. Okay. I went over that stuff and um, just kind of like my overall feeling about the year, and it was really fun. And she had Karen Rontowski on, so that came out today, and she recorded, she texted me like, Leslie texted me last night, oh, I just recorded with Karen, it's going to be out tomorrow. And so today, the 18th, so listen to Karen Rontowski, and then listen to me, and she was saying, I guess, um, a lot of what I was saying lined up with what Karen was saying. That's interesting. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. And the name of her podcast is what now? Because I Want to Know, with Be- Leslie Fear. Because I Want to Know. Okay. Yes. Isn't Great. that like an awesome podcast name? Yeah, it's pretty cool. What I like about Leslie is her show is just different stuff. It's not all the same thing. And so I hadn't heard of her, and she reached out asking me to be on the show, and I'm like, oh, i got to hear her podcast. And I'm checking it out, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, she does what we do. It's not just one specific topic all the time. It's, you know, one episode she has someone talking about writing a uh, riding in a hot air balloon, and then she has somebody talking about being a mortician or working at a body farm, and so it's all different things. Different stuff. Yeah, sure. yeah. it's great. That's a, yeah, that's so awesome. definitely check her out. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait to and see she's a paranormal romance um, author. So, she, so, so her, her novels are paranormal romance things. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's yes. interesting. It's, it's so That's cool. A, yeah. yeah. Cool. I was talking to her after we recorded. Like, her and I ended up talking for, like, two hours on the phone. Tremendous. She's awesome. Do you have any BFF now? I don't know. Another She's BFF. awesome. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, oh, my God. And she lives in Texas. And I'm like, I wish she lived close by because I could totally, like, be like, okay, you and your husband are coming over for dinner. I'm going to cook for you. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Well, that's just, an open invitation. Yes. If, uh, if you're ever up here around these parts, Leslie. Yeah. Come on by. Yes, but it was just really fun, and I'm very thankful that she gave me that opportunity to be on her show and that she even thought of me. Like, that's really cool. You don't give yourself enough credit. I don't. It's just how I am. I'm going to apologize to anybody listening. But for some reason, and we're running everything through a nice mixer and mm-hmm. everything, and I just got my, my microphone... It just, the audio just it keeps going up. It goes down. My voice is Is it your insane. headphones, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm watching it here, and, and everything appears to be the same. I don't know. So I'm going to apologize if everybody gets annoyed by that. We're working on fixing that issue. I don't know what's going on. But anyhow. It was interesting when Leslie and I were talking, some of the stuff, all of a sudden we get this weird, like, phone interference. At one point, she couldn't hear me, and she thought I might have hit the mute button, but I took it off of that screen, so it couldn't do that. And then, like, at another point, I was getting this weird 
staticky sound. I'm like, do you have that on your lunch? She's like, no. And this was after we recorded. It's the and NSA. They don't like what you're saying. I was like, something. yeah, it's something like weird. the like universe that. is trying like, no, don't talk about don't that. Talk like, about yeah, that. yeah. The Matrix yeah. is like, stop. Yes. But yeah, that was interesting, but interesting. good times. Yeah. So cool. we had fun. So nice. check that out. Awesome. How about you? What's up with you? Um, not, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Just, uh, I guess excited, but kind of, um, what's the word? The topic we're going to talk about today. Like, I, I, I'm excited to talk about it, but it, the more I dug into this, the more angry I got. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, you might see the, uh, the Golden Greek come out. The Grumpy Greek? The Grumpy Greek might come out a little bit today. So, if I, if I get a little uh, passionate in my speech or anything, I'm just going to get fair warning. I may not. I'm going to try to be aware of it, but I'm just try to the Greek the Greek temper around. may yes. come out a bit when I discuss some of these things. That's okay. I and the learn. ridiculousness. Oh, you, oh, okay. Actually, yeah. You, right now, we where we record, we record in our home, obviously. So the the smell of garlic, onions, and lamb right now is just permeating the whole house, and it's a great smell. Good. I, it smells really good. I was on the phone with Leslie, we got off the phone, and then I like came downstairs, I rushed, I'm like chopping up the garlic and the onion and getting it, and I have like this nice Dutch oven, it's like um, cast iron Dutch oven, yeah. and I like put the olive oil and I heat it up, I put the chopped garlic and onions, and I let that cook, and then I put the lamb and brown it, and I add some red wine and my sauce and everything, yeah. So I was like doing that in between like getting off the phone with Leslie and recording this episode. So I'm glad it smells good. Tastes better. Oh my gosh. And it I'm making smells, my, my yeah. Greek potatoes. Terrific. With what, the lemon. What's a Greek garlic. potato? It's like the, when we go to your family, the potatoes they have, it's like these potato wedges. And it's just a regular potato. It's, it's a the potato. Way it's prepared, is it, why yeah, people so. With the Greek potato. Because it's like, they, the way they cook it, it's like olive oil, salt, pepper, and I think it's like oregano and garlic, and then they put like lemon, there's like a lemon flavor, and it's really, really good. And so I wanted yes. to eat those, so I made them. All right. Oh, I can't wait to have some yes. left. Yay! Yes, good stuff. Yes. So yeah, no, I, I'm not, not, not much really else going on with me. Uh, still, you know, getting up early every morning, going for those those walks. Really peaceful today, actually. Yeah, very quiet. I, I went out earlier than I have been going mm -hmm. out, so I was out at uh, maybe it's right around five o'clock this morning. I can't remember exactly. The time. It was between it was, five and five thirty. It was definitely the earliest I've gone out mm -hmm. so far because when I got home, it was still dark. The sun hadn't even begun to peek its head out over the horizon yet, and yeah, it was just very quiet and still and. Normally, I'll see a couple of cars that are driving in the center. Today, nothing. Mm -hmm. Completely dark, black, quiet. Like, not even a bird chirping this morning at all. And I was walking for about an hour. So it was very quiet and just very still and peaceful. Like, man, why can't it always be like this? I, when this I went was for, very nice. When I went for my walk, it was, like, once the sun came up, there were people around. So I think you had it right. Uh, yeah, I timed it perfectly you for did. myself this yes. morning. Yes, you mentioned the birds chirping. Yes. So I'm out there, and I'm like, I like to sing to trees and plants and nature, and so I just start singing, and it's not like I'm belting out. I'm just singing very quietly, like maybe if you were next to me, you'd hear me. But I start singing, and once I got to like the chorus of the song, all of a sudden the birds started chirping. It was almost as if they were singing with me. The way it sounded just like went. And I'm like, they're singing with me. This is awesome. awesome. Nice. Yeah. I Very liked cool. it. Yeah. Now, what, I'm going to put you on a spot because I didn't really ask you, but what made you decide today of all days to just get up and go for a walk? Just I don't know. random. I don't know. You I just... just well, so I used to walk all the time, and then I... I mean, it's been cold out, so of course that's yeah. a turn for my people. My shoulder got really painful, so even just walking yeah. hurt really bad. My, I was in so much pain with my shoulder. So I stopped, and then actually we were watching... What was it? Relentless? Is that what it was? The DDP? Oh, thing? yes, yeah, yes. And... I was, we were watching this, and we used to do DDP yoga, and 
I thought it was great, but trying to do it, my shoulder hurt so bad whenever I tried. And when we were watching it and just seeing all these people who like had disabilities and they're in pain and I'm just thinking, okay, you got to stop this. You need to just like do stuff. You need to move. Stop making excuses. Like it freaking hurts. I'm, I'm and like, I'm I, there have been times where I, I try to lift my arm and it just, it's not moving. I'm teasing you. I know. So I was like, okay, I'm just, I got to try. And so this morning I got up, you were already, like when I came downstairs, you were already gone. I was awake when you left, but kind of downstairs and I just start doing some like DDP yoga. I do the stretches and everything and just some of the exercises. I didn't put the disc on. I just kind of, I'm going to ease back into this. And I did that and you were just saying like, oh, it's nice out. And I looked and I'm like, the sun's not even up yet. And I can like walk and watch the sunrise, and I'm gonna do that. There you go. Yeah, because sometimes nice. before, like when you were sleeping, the sun's rising, and I'll go outside and I'll like talk to the plants and animals. And yeah, I was just like, I'm gonna take advantage of this. I have the time where I can do it today, and I'm Terrific. gonna do it. Good. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. No, I was just curious because I didn't, I didn't ask you. I don't think why you just decided to. Get why to do I ever do the things I do? I don't know if there was some fascinating, interesting reason that we could talk about here today. I just told you. All right, there it is. So yeah, we watched Relentless. Uh, the It's a documentary about Diamond Dallas Page and the, I guess, the, the start and rise of his yoga program, his DDPY, I think he calls it now, DDPY. Yeah. It's not DDP yoga anymore, it's DDPY. I still call it DDP yoga. Uh, and it basically just goes through the, the genesis of the program how he came up with it and just like I guess the trials and tribulations of the brand uh, the program taking off or, or the the things that happened starting the business and then all the yeah how different setbacks and things like that that he encountered and how we got to where he is today which was pretty interesting because I didn't know a lot of that stuff before I didn't know all the things that he'd gone through yeah as far as like short selling his house and all, all yeah. that kind of stuff. I didn't, I didn't know any of that stuff before. And he brought up, too, at one point where he was calling people who bought the yeah. program, and he did that, because when did we buy? It was back in 2008, yeah, he called me. I was like, who's this? <laughs> and, of course, I was at home, and I'm like, I missed it. Yeah, he, he, it, well, because he calls, always he blocked his number, and I'm like, who's calling me from a blocked number? She a telemarketer, so I'm like, can't wait to answer this. I'm like, and I was actually, uh, a buddy of mine, Brian, was next to me, and uh, BMAC, and I, I picked up the phone, and like, yeah, who's this? Because that's how you get, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a telemarketer, so, you know, me, of course, 12 years ago. Yeah, who's this? It's DDP. I go, who? Who's this? DDP. And it, you can't mistake that voice. It's it's a he's got a very distinct voice. So like, oh hey, what's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> How you doing? And we just shot the breeze for like ten minutes. And he's like, yeah. So you bought the program, and they asked me why I bought the program. I explained to him, you know, I, I'm actually uh, in your line of work, and in your previous line of work, I, I'm, I wrestle, and you know, and so whatever. We kind of made small talk back and forth, and he knew some people that I knew, and vice versa so yeah it was cool we had a good little talk but it was it was very unexpected I, i'm like i remember getting home that night telling him like yeah diamond dallas page called me like just completely out of the blue to thank me for buying i love the that program. i love that I, I thought that was the coolest thing yeah yeah i just again people have this perception when somebody's successful and they think it's just like this instant, oh, well, you're a wrestler, so obviously it blew up and you're going to get these spots on TV because of this. But he didn't have that. He, he like, he didn't, in the beginning, he, it wasn't like, oh, you're Diamond Dallas Page, so you're going to make millions. He had to work really, really hard and then keep going and it would fail and he had to try again. And so it's, it's just a nice story of just keep going. It's yeah. nothing is always like most things aren't successful right away. And if you truly believe in what you're doing, just keep doing Stick it. Stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Just keep going. Be as the title of the documentary is be relentless. Yeah. Just keep going. Don't stop. Yeah. It's actually one of my favorite books, uh, relentless. Um, 
and it's a book by uh, Tim Grover. I think I mentioned on this pod, one of our very early podcasts that I finished reading it. Fantastic book. But it's the same idea, the same mindset. Just there's very few overnight successes. There's very few. Most overnight successes take years. So if, if anybody out there that's listening, if you have an idea for anything, yeah. whatever it is, and you want to start it, just start it. It's never going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect right off the bat. And just kind of stick with it. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep making strides. A little bit of progress every day. And before you know it, you're way further down the road. And hopefully sooner rather than later, you know, something hits for you. But if not, just stick with it. Believe in yourself. That's the only person that needs to believe in you is yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If you believe in yourself, keep going. Keep pushing. And eventually, if you stick with it long enough, it'll hit. Yeah. And that was that was the moral of the story with... Uh, the Relentless Documentary. I definitely recommend it. It's on Amazon Prime, so if anybody has Prime, it's only an hour long. It's, it's not, very it's inspiring. Not too long. Yeah, yeah, he had a lot of really great uh, stories of people who he helped and everything along the way. Uh, always like seeing stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah it was really cool. Yeah. Definitely. And I just want to say, like, part of being successful is you have to put yourself out there, so don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Yeah, that's huge. And I think that's I think big, that's the scariest thing. That's a big hurdle for a lot of people, I think. Just, just, uh, worrying what other people are going to think and, 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 you know, just, yeah, like you said, putting yourself out there. And I think that's just the biggest mm-hmm. hurdle for a lot of people to overcome. So just do it. Who cares? Mm-hmm. I mean, really, who cares? Just do it. Just do it. Get out there and, and you never know who's listening, who's watching. And if nothing else, if you have a positive message or, or something that you think can help people, you never know who is listening and you never know who you may help, who you know, maybe was looking for something and they just, you just happened to be what they were looking for at that moment in time. And hey, I say it, if, if you can help just one person and make one person's life better with something that you say or something that you do or do it, why not? Yes. You know? So yeah, there we go. I love so, the positivity. It's just like, well, oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. There's just so much negativity nowadays. I mean, that's... It's like you have to find the inspiring stuff. You, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's refreshing when people uh, try to go against that negativity that's so prevalent in today's society but anyhow and now we're gonna talk, <laughs> go on a topic that there, might piss people there, off there we go. yeah and now <laughs> it's gonna be kind of difficult to segue into this i don't know how you really segue into this topic but <laughs> but it's one that I, we may have mentioned it just in passing before on the podcast we, we probably yeah. have there's so many things that we say yeah we're gonna talk about this sometime we're gonna talk about that and then we don't do it right away, but we do eventually get around to talking about yeah. the things that we mentioned. And one of those things that I see and deal with every single day, and I'm sure most people do, if they have, especially if they have small kids, the topic of dinosaurs. Freaking dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are a big business, aren't they? Yeah. You've got children's toys, you've got coloring books, you've got the Jurassic Park movies, mm-hmm. you've got We talked about it, all that I think, stuff. in a previous show where we were talking about TV shows, Denver, The Last Dinosaur. You got TV dinosaurs. Remember the, the puppets? With That's the right, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, You have so many different shows about dinosaurs. Dinosaur Train on PBS. That's right. All these different things with dinosaurs. Yeah, so they're fake. What? Uh, t- yes. And, and, and this is something that I've, I've, I've suspected for a long time. I'm sure I'm not the only person. Obviously, it's, it, There's a big group of people out there that have, have uh, investigated this and, and come up with lots of evidence to support the, I'm going to say claim, because it is controversial, of course, like most things nowadays. It's controversial if you speak something that goes against the official narrative. But... Yeah, there's a lot of people that have been researching this for a long time, compiling evidence, and uh, yeah, dinosaurs are a big hoax. It's all fake. It's all made up. Okay, so I just want to put it out there. You and I. Really, I'm going to talk about why. No, and, I know and, we and we didn't. Things. Like this isn't scripted. This is like I know what you've told me. Like the little bit I've kind of looked at. I'm not as big into following this as you are because I'm just like whatever, but. Um, well, you say I'm, I'm big into following. I'm not really big into following it. There's just there's some topics into learning about. I'll go I'll go down the rabbit hole. I'll yeah. I'll research a couple of things here and there, and then I just try to think and come to my own conclusions. Yeah. But it's not like I look at this every single day. No, I know I look at it like okay, well, even if they are fake, it's like 
does it really make a difference in my life right now? We can look at something and say, okay, I know that's not real anyway, so I don't know. I think it's more, I guess, for our children, like making sure they understand like what's real, what's not, and what's unsure of. That's that's the big thing there is the children. It's all, and, and what I said earlier, <laughs> children. Some, yeah, yeah, but what I said earlier, something I do every day. It's because our kids love dinosaurs. They, they do. Love dinosaur figurines. Yeah, because they're dinosaur cute. coloring books. I used to love like Triceratops as a kid. So, yeah. yeah, I liked Stegosaurus and Triceratops. They were my two favorites as a kid. There was like nine dinosaurs when I was a kid growing up. I know. There was like, there was like, now there's like 800,000. Yeah, our six year old goes over like all these different things. I'm like, what? They're like, like gremlins. They just multiply. Yes, yeah, so there's just more and water. more. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, so when I'm asking questions, it's because I really don't know. <laughs> it's like, I, no, I want to know. Sure. And, um, and hopefully I, can, I have answers to some of your questions based on some of the stuff that I've looked up and found myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a big work. I guess the big question would be, why would somebody fake this? Money. Money uh, was the big thing, of course, at first. Like uh, marketing was? Uh, well... <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pull out my uh, my my phone here. I have dinosaurs, right? So bear with me for just a minute as I uh, go to the the information that I have it just, that, I, that it, I had pulled up, and I just you know you technology it. I lost it. That's okay. I it just popped in my head. I was like, we should have opened with remember the song like. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. You remember that song? Uh, yes, Was Not Was is the name of the band. Yeah, we should open with that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll close with it or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, dinosaurs, um, they, were, they were invented back in the uh, 1800s. The term dinosaur comes from the Greek words for um, terrible and reptile. So that's where the word dinosaur comes from. Give me one word. One word. So they were invented by a guy named Richard Owen. And I'm showing you a picture of this guy. That guy looks fake, doesn't he? He does. He does. Look like, it doesn't I was like, that's like a, a picture from person. the 1800s. Yeah, it doesn't even look like a real person. He has it? like reptilian eyes. Yeah, very strange. Maybe we'll put this in the uh, video podcast, uh, the video portion of the podcast. Just a quick still of this. Uh, yeah, photo. he doesn't look real. Yeah, it just it, it looks very strange, but uh, yeah, he invented uh, dinosaurs, and then shortly after he uh, came up with dinosaurs, they started finding fossils. It's kind of coincidental, I think, how they they just happened to find fossils. So the the prevailing theory by people that have researched this topic is that they just started putting bones in a certain area and. Excav excavating them. I'm putting my hands up in quotes because they're just planted. They planted bones and then said that they were these giant creatures that lived millions of years ago. That's what they said. Oh, go ahead. You're, you're, you're in deep thought. You're I'm going to continue. Or... No, okay, okay, so I get confused because I don't really study this. But they say they find fossils, which is from the imprint of a bone and like rock or whatever, and they get it from that. So it's but so it's not the actual bone, or do they find actual bones? No. So they're they're actual the bones themselves bones because there are real fossils that are found, but they're not dinosaurs. But there are old fossilization occurs when uh, and I'm gonna pull it up because I don't want to mess this up. I'm gonna sound ridiculous if I start talking uh, from memory because I know I'm going to mess it up. Uh, but fossils are bone fragments that are preserved in a casing of rock, uh, or excuse me, that's the common thought, but that's actually a misconception. A fossil is a bone-shaped piece of rock whose contours have been defined almost imperceptibly by the shape of the bone buried in the sediment from which the rock was formed, uh, because fossils are found only in sedimentary rock. There is no actual bone remaining. Every one of its cells has been calcified or mineralized by groundwater over a long period of time. Thus, there is no DNA in a fossil, despite the claims made by science fiction writers. Jurassic Park, for example. That's that like was whole, from a mosquito, yeah. not dinosaur bones. Uh, whatever. 
but a fossilized mosquito. But so whatever. You're right. It was a mosquito. It was an wasn't amber. It? it was an amber. So it wasn't. I don't think it was fossilized. I think it was preserved in amber. Okay. So you're right now saying that this is dinosaurs are real and Jurassic Park could happen because it was amber and not. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I don't, I don't think you a hard time. what you were alluding to, to Jurassic Park. I thought it was they took. The blood that the mosquito you're, got from a dinosaur. Oh, no, you're right. They I think, I think you're right. Yes, no, I think you're right. It's if I remember since, the movie, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I think you're. I think you're okay. correct. I'm going to give you a point on that one. We won that one. <laughs> uh, so again, the fossils that the, that these people claim to have found, you would think would have been found prior to this theory being posited that there were these massive creatures that existed millions of years ago. Okay, so were they digging in the same spots and then all of a sudden one day they were there in the same areas? Here's the best part about this. There was one area in England where bones just kept magically appearing. It was just this one area that they kept finding these bones, these these dinosaur bones and everything. And then of course it gets reported in medical journals and scientific journals and things at the time. And even back then, like today, Regardless of your thoughts, your beliefs, the facts are, whoever's paying somebody money, they want a result for the money that they've paid. So if you're a scientific journal and you're getting paid money to publish something, if you're getting a substantial amount of money, it's going to keep your lights on or keep the water running or whatever, you're going to publish whatever the person that gave you the money is going to tell you to publish. That's why science, in my view, is very, very flawed. Because there's always money involved. Sounds like a lack of integrity. There's, it's very difficult to find actual, true, unbiased science, fact-based science, in my view. And when you, if you really step back and look at things honestly, I think everybody should be on board with that statement. That if, if there's money involved, you got to look at who's funding the research and who's funding oh, yeah. particular studies. That happens with big things even now, things. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, so are you saying that these people would go out and dig and they like they just happen to find bones because somebody put it there? Or do you think it could also be they just say they find it or they put I mean, it there? I, I per personally, I think it's a combination of both. And I think a, a lot of these things were faked. I mean, obviously, they were faked. There's no... They're still to this day, and this is even if you believe dinosaurs are real. If you are still still have those blinders on, you're still asleep, I'm going to say, and you buy into that lie, and that nonsense, because you've been led to believe you've that your entire life, which everybody has from the time you're a child. You watch, car I mean, nowadays, there's cartoons about dinosaurs. Our, our, you know, one of the classes that, one of the science classes for our six-year-old, they talk about dinosaurs. It's like the big thing. <clears throat> so they're teaching children early on. So most people nowadays, especially people our age, you were raised to believe that these were a real thing. This is what existed before humans, right? Yeah. And then you're also, how did they get wiped out? By a, by a meteor, Comets. right? Or a comet or wh whatever the story was. The wrath of God. Right. And it just wiped out and, and made everything extinct. Allegedly, supposedly. In the area. In, right. So, oh, go ahead. You were about to say something, so I don't want to cut, cut off your phone. No, it's just my mind's going everywhere. It made That's me fine. Think, it's a free wheel of discussion. I remember growing up. Remember fossil fuels? Oh, oh gosh. So, yeah. I remember growing up hearing about, and especially a teenager, you gotta go get gas in your tank, hearing about how... The oil we get and the gasoline we get came from dinosaurs. So it was like as the body decomposed, it seeped into the ground, causing the oil and the crude, and that was all like the fats and everything and the meat and all of it broken down. And it gave us what we have today. And I remember people would say, we have to be careful. We have to find a different source of energy because we're going to run out. And here we are. However many years later, there's no shortage of any oil. In fact, a lot of the wells that they drill, they, they've gone back and they've gone and drilled wells that they previously thought were dry, and they are plentiful again. So 
what whatever and, and the mechanism still is not understood but whatever causes oil in the earth it's it's a replenishing source it, uh, a replenishing yeah source it so it it replenishes itself once it's once it's extracted it will replenish itself however that mechanism works i don't think is understood yet but they have gone back to wells that they thought were previously completely dry and out and then and they give it some out. time they give it some time and, and it's replenished yes so that right there, the fossil fuel thing, bullshit. Well, didn't that come out as well anyway? Yeah, completely bullshit. Completely bullshit. It just it's, makes it's you... It's manufactured scarcity because whoever's wonder, in charge yeah. of the oil needs to make it scarce so they can charge more of a premium for it so they can all make more money. That's what it is. It all comes down to money. Everything. Most of the time, you want to find the truth, follow the money. And there you have it. So, dinosaurs. Yes. Not real. What no. other information do you have of this? Well, so again, uh, as I was starting to say before, I'll, I'll try to come back to that point. Even if you are still under the belief that dinosaurs are real, there are no complete 100% actually excavated fossils. That was something you mentioned. Yes. And you so... You cannot find a complete dinosaur anywhere ever. There never has been one. All of the pictures, drawings, anything you see in a museum which I'll get back to in a second, they are guesses. They are best guesses by You people. mentioned that to me at some point last year, and I tried looking it up to see if that was true. And I remember I was trying to find, like, dinosaur exhibits, and I was trying to, like, reach out to people and say, like, in your exhibits, like, first I was trying to see online, like, was there anything, like, in a dinosaur exhibit, can you tell me if you have a complete set of bones? Kind of get that information. I sent emails to museums and nobody got back to me. Wonder why. Wonder why. Very interesting. You'd think, I mean, that's something that anybody could, even a PR person at a museum could just quickly, you know, fire off a form email to you or something. Yeah. A couple of lines. No, unfortunately, we can't give you that information. Whatever. Not nothing. But nobody even responded to you. It's interesting. So, the only... The only actual quote unquote real dinosaur bones that have been excavated, the things that are purported to be dinosaurs, nobody's nobody can actually examine them. There have been scientists, researchers, paleontologists, those to, they have actually requested to look at real bones. Because all the stuff you see in National Geographic, all those shows you watched as a kid or whenever growing up, where they were excavating bones and they got it was all production. It was all television production. It was all prefabricated. It was all made up. It was not real. It doesn't shock me. It's like you know this now. Like you're like, yeah, I, I see that because yeah. you see how things are. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, none of that stuff was real. None of it. Uh, actually, National Geographic, I don't know if you remember this, back in, I believe it was 1999 or 2000, they came out and they said that it, we found a fossil that shows the missing link between dinosaurs and birds. And they, they were saying that the T-Rex, you know, that big old T-Rex, that it came from a, uh, the, the chicken, today's chicken, evolved from the T-Rex. That, that's the belief, right? They, because they found a fossil that they said proved this. So are you saying a T-Rex that tastes like chicken? <laughs> but a bunch. Yeah, I don't, have, I, don't have a, I don't have a rim shot here to, to insert. <laughs> But uh, I don't have that sound clip to insert. There That's yet. like what popped in my head. So it seems like chicken. But <laughs> you're a goof. I know. But that that particular fossil that National Geographic they put it in their magazine. I remember hearing that. You remember this? Well, it also came out shortly after that that fossil that they found that they said was this finally the proof we've been waiting for and all this it was fake. Somebody <laughs> faked it, and oh. they and they actually National Geographic had to come out and retract that story. However. Do you, do you ever hear about the retraction? Very rarely, but you still hear people talking about I feel like in the, past, the T-Rex came from a chicken. That story is still out there. The that past five years, that, that's been floating around. Yeah, because people have now started to kind of wake up and question everything, as I've always said you should. But but no, that, that story still stuck out there. I still hear people every now and again say, yeah, you, you, oh, T-Rex, that Chicken came from a T-Rex, you know that? Well, I remember they're, they're related. the they're Velociraptor. No, no. People talked about the Velociraptor, especially like Jurassic Park. And they were saying it doesn't actually look like they say a Velociraptor had feathers. 
and it was more bird-like. And I was like, so that's interesting why they portray it one way, and then how do you know it had feathers? You don't. Like, is because that possible? it's all made up. Like, I know, but I'm just saying that the they things we think about, yeah. like, how do you well, know it had feathers? Like, do the feathers get fossilized? Well, I think that when, when you go and you, and you look at dinosaurs, it's like pretty much everything else. Once you are raised and learning that and hearing that your entire life... You just accept it. You, you just start. It. You just accept it because, oh yeah, that's what that is because that's what I've been told my entire life. You don't even think that. You don't think that's because that's what I've been told my entire life. You just think, oh yeah, because subconsciously you're like, oh, well, this is what I've been, been fed my entire life. My, my, the brain, my computer has been getting this information inputted in my entire life. This is what Part I know. Program. This is what I know. This is what I'm told. This is what I accept as truth and reality and fact. When in fact... Actual fact, it's bullshit. It's completely made up. And the gentleman that I told you about, Richard Owen, who made up dinosaurs, confessed in a letter to his lover that he made up the entire thing. So he there he has admitted it, not out in public, but there were private letters that were uncovered that he sent to his lover where he admitted that he okay, made Okay, because I was thing. like, did this come from the lover? The, the, or was it, did they actually have the proof of the letters? Had the proof of the letters. Those, those okay. have been made, yes. So he made it up. It's completely nonsense. It's bullshit. But, he, but this guy got, like, all kinds of awards. Uh, I believe he got a knighthood. All these things from the queen because of his research. It was all bullshit. Made it up. Made it all up. And look what dinosaurs have turned into. It's, it's, it's quite interesting... Uh, not interesting. I, I think, for me, it's it's quite irritating and infuriating at times when I, you really think about how deceived we are. Well, and it I mean, just says, what else have we been lied to about? Everything. And even everything. knowing if someone, it takes, you know, one person or one group to make a lie about something and get everyone to fall for it and believe it, and then after so much time goes on, people just take it as, well, that's because, yeah, it's true. It just, I don't know, it just, it's crazy to think of like, okay, and what else have we been lied to about? I, I mean, I know we've discussed different topics of things that we think we've been lied to, or we put it out there to say, have we been lied to about this? This is something where you don't want to believe it at first. Like when you mentioned it to me and we've talked about it, it's like, I don't want to believe that because dinosaurs are cool. And I, yeah, I remember the first time I mentioned it to you, you were like, what? What? And then I, I slowly broke you down. I worried down. What? No, because of course evidence. me, I want to know. So I go and I try yeah. to research and I sure. try to find things because it's not like I'm just going to take your word. No offense. It's like, I, I think it's that you have to, you just take me a, you have to find out for no. yourself. Yeah, that's the thing. And you think about the, the things you've questioned in the past because a lot of times you just forget. You question something and then it's like not that big of a deal. So it's like, oh, whatever, you move on. And I thought about like the things I've questioned. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, and about that. And you can't find the answers or the answers you find don't make sense. So I look at it like, okay, again, what we always say, do your own research, find out what rings true for you. And that's what I did. And it's still shocking. I'm still like, I think about things and I'm like, wait a minute. Because like, as we're talking, my brain's going and I'm trying to find like, can I, you know, think of something to say, well, what about this? What about this? I remember hearing something or reading something about people who said dinosaurs weren't real. One of the things was look at the way they are anatomically built. Yeah. That's that's another that's another point that a lot of people make who call this out for what it is. In my view, a hoax, completely made up. The the just the engineering wise, I guess, or if, the structure of, of their body. The structure of their body. Thank you. Uh, engineers have come out and said they're impossible. They're physically impossible. There's no way it could work because you can't have a body that giant supported by these tall, these small legs. For example, the Tyrannosaurus rex thing was supposedly enormous, but it was on just two legs that were way too small to support its body, or the Brontosaurus, for example. It just, there's no way that would ever work. 
not to mention metabolically as a as a living organism there's no way that a that a animal that large could eat enough food especially where we're told they were of the most dinosaurs were plant eaters there's no way calorically they'd be able to take in enough calories to support their size they'd be eating literally non-stop they'd never sleep they'd just always be constantly having to eat and even then they wouldn't get enough food eating just plants but that's what we're told we're told oh. and why why were we told that think about it well because you want dinosaurs to be these lovely cuddly cute things that are that are you know and you you got to have the bad guy you got to have the t-rex he's the meat. got to have the heel you got to have a heel of course but most of them, oh, you know, like the Triceratops and the Stegosaurus, they, they're plant Gentle eaters. Gentle giant. The Brontosaurus, they're all, they're plant eaters. In terms of one of the arguments I bring forward is they say, oh, there's no way a dinosaur could exist like that. But people used to say that in, these engineers would say there's no way a bee can fly looking at its wings, the size of its wings and everything. It can't, the wings can't hold the weight of the bee and then if it's carrying nectar and pollen. That's been proven false. It has, but I'm just saying like these are the things like they'll say <coughs> there's no way, but then they do more research, they study more and they find out, oh, okay, there is a way. So I guess my playing devil's advocate one could say, well, couldn't you say the same thing in that argument? They were wrong about the bee. They could be wrong about the dinosaurs. I think when you're talking about a bee, something that you can examine now, something that's it, that is real and exists still today, no, I, I, I can't see that being the same. That You can't okay. make that comparison. Okay, I'm just trying to because play devil's advocate. I'm trying to no, think that's, of that's things, fine. things I've but, thought and, about. And I'm not trying to cop out with that answer. And I, I mean, As I said, I'm like, that's going to sound like a cop out, but it's not. A bee is something that you can examine, you can look at, you can see. A dinosaur, there's still no real proof that they ever existed. Again, any bones, anything you've seen in a museum, they're all fake. There is a company in China today that just their business is that they make Fossils, they make the bones for displays in museums. That is what they do. There is a company. I remember you told me that yes. and I looked it up. Yes, that's there right. Is a, I that's forgot about what that. they do. So nothing you've ever seen in a museum is real. Nothing. And any bones, like I said before, that they say were really dinosaurs, they're off limits to the public. Nobody can view them and inspect them to see. Are they real? What are they? Let's let's look at the, the age of them. No, nobody's allowed to look at them. Why? Why can't they look at them? Because they don't trust Either them. Because... They'll break them. They'll ruin them. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I think one of the excuses that somebody said they were told, a researcher said they were told, was because they're they're too radioactive, so they can't you can't you can't examine them because they're very radioactive. What? Right. I mean, again, like the whole thing, it just makes no sense. But that's okay. I got a shit ton of shun guy. We're good. People who. No, about Shanghai. That I get that. Great attempt at being funny. Yeah, that's just again popping and in my head. You just, in my view, <laughs> failed. I don't care. Failed. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking if they're saying it's radioactive, but like that's, that's that's what somebody said. A researcher said. Why would they be radioactive? Were they at like Chernobyl or something? I don't get me started on that stuff now. We don't want to get we don't want to get into. Okay, okay, no, I'm just saying like that first of all, why would they be radioactive? I, Second of all, they don't, don't have know. protection, so people like why I don't know. It's just there's so many whys. It's it's again. It's like the uh, there's a jeez. I, I don't. I'm not gonna even bother because I'm gonna mess it up and I'm gonna sound like I'm a fool if I say it. Uh, but essentially, like if you look behind, I forget what it's called. But if if you lock a door and you tell somebody you can't go in there because of whatever, whatever it is. And their whole life, they they will not open that door because it's locked. And they've been told their whole life, there's something. If you open that door, something really bad is going to happen. Don't open that door. Stay away from that door. Don't you dare open that door. Something bad is going to happen. Your whole life, you wake up, you grow up, and you're and you're just afraid to open the door because something bad is going to happen. There's something bad inside. And then one day you get you get told that yeah, you've got you know two days left to live or whatever. You're like, well, I've only got two days left to live. I've always wanted to know what's behind that door. It's so bad. I just I, my, my, my curiosity is taking over. i got to open it. i got to find out. So you, you pry open that door. You open it, and 
There is not a goddamn thing behind the door. It's completely empty. It's just the idea that was implanted in your mind this entire time is what was behind that door. There was never anything behind the door. It was just the fear that was implanted in your mind, the belief that was put in your mind that over the time and over many, many years just grew into something and then you open the door and there's nothing there. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. The big, all mighty, powerful Wizard of Oz and then you go behind the curtain and it's just this little guy in the cave making all kinds of noise. It's, that's, but dinosaurs, fake, completely fake. You're not allowed to look at the fossils. They are under lock and key. You can't examine them. That's crazy. They're too dangerous. They're too fragile. They're too radioactive. Whatever other excuse they can come up with that week, you can't examine them. So anything you've seen in a museum... So who has examined them? Who's holding on to them? I, I believe, supposedly, the Smithsonian has some. Oh, because they can handle radioactive uh, stuff. So again, supposedly, that's... That's the story that they've got. Uh, they've got fossils there. There's stories and theories that the Vatican. I was gonna say. Oh, sorry, as, as you, they drop your thing, you I got excited everywhere. because I'm literally thinking, and I'm about to say the Vatican. It's in the basement of the Vatican. Yes. <laughs> and then you and, and, said it. You yes. said out loud what I was thinking. Yes. And, 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 I'm, and I'm now wearing my tea. Thank you so much. Oh, it was a drip. It's like <laughs> empty. Anyhow, yes, the Vatican supposedly has some, but again, these are, these are big institutions that it's only in their best interest to keep the lie going. Now, I can remember going and I, I think the Boston Museum of Science, I believe, had a display. I don't know if they still do or not, but I know that they did at one yes, time. Yes, because that's one of the places I looked up to see if they had a display and they didn't at that point. They didn't? Okay. I had gone there when they did, and I remember just looking at it and just being in awe of the thing. Just thinking, man, could you imagine being around and walking around and seeing these darn things? And could you even just imagine? And, and I remember just being in awe of it. And now I look back and I'm like, the fucking thing was fake. It wasn't even a real, but it's presented to you there as real. You know what's funny is I'm just thinking like Mothman is more real than dinosaurs. And it clicks of a lot of the stuff they want you to think is fake is real. And a lot of the stuff they want you to think is real is really fake. We live in an inverted reality. You do? Truth is inverted. I mean, I mean, we're witnessing it in real time right now. How many things that so many of us were raised to think were good are now being portrayed as bad and evil and wrong to think. Especially, I mean, that's more relevant now than ever, right? So many people now. It's, it's insane. But our society, our values, everything has been inverted. What's up is down, and what's down is up. It's, it's bizarre it's, world. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, if you you know, there's some people that will say that that is a uh, a lot of religious people say that's a satanic inversion of reality, and I, I don't like to get too religious or anything like that. I'm not a religious person. We've talked before. We're more spiritual, uh, but yeah, it, it dinosaurs are bullshit. That's that's. That's, That's going to be the name of the episode. Dinosaurs are No, bullshit. I'm going to be very, very, very crafty about how I word the title of this episode and the description because I have the feeling we would get pulled from YouTube or any other platform that currently is against this type of sp speech, any, any of these type of topics where anybody questions the official narrative now, you are officially labeled a dangerous person or a wacko. But remember, hey, when thinking outside the box is good. I, I, I'm all about conversation. I want yeah. some. I want to talk to somebody that can debunk what I just said. That'd be awesome. I would love to talk to somebody that could give me evidence and proof, not just what they've been told or what they've read. I want somebody that can actually give me proof and evidence, and that can actually bring me back over. Because I'll tell you, when I figured out. And it clicked in my head that, yeah, this is bullshit. That's true. It makes no sense. And when logic started to kick in, I started to question. I was pissed because one of my favorite movies of all time was Jurassic Park. I love those movies. Uh, I remember just being so pumped when those came out and just watching them on the screen being like, man, that's awesome. And, and I remember just loving that. And I, I loved dinosaurs when I was playing. Yeah. I loved them, and I couldn't wait it's to talk about dinosaurs with my kids. But now it's like, I don't want to talk about dinosaurs with my kids because it's a lie. It's sad. It's disappointing. It's so deflating. It's like, oh. 
I gotta tell you, uh, our oldest is 13 years old now. He was 11. And I had kind of started learning Rising first up. about these things, mm -hmm. these uh, you know, dinosaurs, for example. And I remember we were just having a discussion driving somewhere. We were in the car driving and we were talking. And I just asked him, I said, hey, hey, buddy, what do you think about, excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me, wow. I said, buddy, what do you think about dinosaurs? Like, what do you, what do you think about? Because he never talked about them. Yeah. And he looked at me, and I did not lead him in any way. I didn't say anything. Uh, I just asked him that question. What do you think about dinosaurs? And he looked at me, and he goes, well, they're not real. And I just went, well, yeah, because they, they, you know, they haven't been around for a long time. He goes, he just, he looked at me, and he made a face. And I'll try to, I'll try to make the face for people that are watching. I gotta see if you can do the face. Dad, they're not real. They were never real. And I just looked at him and I went, what? And I had a big smile on my face when I said it to him because I was like, geez, my 11-year-old my, my is smarter than I am because he's not buying the bullshit. That's like when we talk to our kids and, about like saying Santa isn't real. And yeah. he's like, yeah, I know, duh. And I'm yeah. like, he was so relieved he didn't have to play along for us. Yes. And... He actually started going into a couple of things, just saying, like, it doesn't make any sense. And every and he, he like, kind of went off on his own little tangent. I'm just like, where the hell is this coming from? And he was he was giving me stuff that I hadn't even thought of. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, all right, jeez, uh, great. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got a smart one here. <laughs> we've got one that can think for we gotta, himself. Oh, no, we got a thinker here. Let's watch out. <laughs> Yeah. This one can see. Yeah. Remember, remember they live? Yes, they live. Oh, my this goodness. This one can see. Yes. Uh, yeah, but it, it was, I was just like, it was a proud moment, <laughs> of course. But I just, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? Like, how did you, how did you come to this conclusion? And he, uh, one of the things he said was, well, they had, they come up with new dinosaurs like every year. Where are they finding them? And I'm just, and I was like, you know what? You're right. When you and I were growing up, there was like nine dinosaurs. Now yeah. I don't even know how many dinosaurs there are. There's okay. so there's they're ridiculous. There's amounts. like hundreds. It's it's insane. Like they One just make them up. You made me think of like where did they come from? It made me think of like so you know I love crystals. Yes. I think anyone who listens to our show regularly knows I love crystals. And there are different caves, there's mines. Like when you think about like people who um, look for diamonds or like if they mine down for like crystals, gold, silver, any natural resource, they're like, have you ever seen like pictures of diamond mines that are freaking huge and they go deep, deep down? Mm -hmm. Do they ever find fossils in those ever? I'm sure you, you'll... Now that you've put it out there, I'm sure somebody will come out and say, oh, I found some, but no, not that I'm aware of. Not yeah, it just makes me think, like, all this deep digging in this big area, and there's no... Well, the deepest hole that they've ever dug, well, or the, the, the deepest they've ever drilled into the earth is eight miles. But I'm talking about, like, how far do they dig for dinosaur bones? I, I, I honestly, I'll, right here, I don't have that information in front of me, but I would assume not very far i don't i don't know I, I i'm just saying like those kind of mines go deep you're talking about diamond mines or, and or are you different talking about excavating of, fossils or di for, looking for, for dinosaur, looking for bones. dinosaur bones looking for fossils how deep do they dig and then compared to people who dig in mines and like go underground and they dig and are they you know what i'm trying to think about because there's different types of mines they dig different ways but nobody found anything there I think we'd hear about something. I would think that, that as, as long as mining has been going on and, and drilling and those kind of things, and not drilling too much, but mining and things like that, I would think that we would have heard about dinosaurs prior to the mid-1800s. That's just my view. That, but we, we but didn't. But we didn't. We didn't because nobody thought of it before then. That's why nobody had them. And I mean, I'm going to put a couple of links in the uh, show notes so people can just check out some, some really well put together research. Uh, and there are some, some links I'm going to put in there. They do have 
uh, a little bit of a religious slant to it as far as reasoning behind why some of this was done. And, and you can take that or leave it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but just some stuff to get people thinking. Just just to give a little more to go on than just some of the stuff that I'm saying mm -hmm. here. Uh, because I always like to put that kind of stuff. Because I want people to do their own research and go down the rabbit hole if we you say want to on your own. Um, Come to your own conclusion. Yeah, of course. Uh, but one of the th one of the theories is that the reason that a lot of this was done is because uh, uh, this gentleman that came up with dinosaurs and invented them was because he was jealous of all the attention that Charles Darwin was getting for his theory of evolution that came out right around this time. So he needed to get some glory for himself, so he came up with the the theory. And at first, it was a theory of dinosaurs. That's, I, I think I, I forgot to mention that earlier. It was a theory at first that he came up with and published. And then they found proof because they uncovered these bones. Kind of coincidental how all that happened, right? Interesting. Yes, but uh, again, it was more so his jealousy of Charles Darwin and the Darwin theory of evolution. And so he wanted some glory for himself. So he came up with this ridiculous thing that everybody ran with and here we are today it's like in the age of knowing in the age of aquarius i'm hoping more and more people are waking up to the nonsense of what dinosaurs Seeing are things for what they are i want to bring up um on that topic you showed me a website what is it called like these people are fake or these people oh Okay, yes, we'll mention it briefly, but I don't want to get too deep into it because of an upcoming yes, episode. Yes, This person does not, doesn't exist dot com. I'll okay. put that link in the show so notes too, so people can get kind of a primer for an upcoming episode. So just with that, you start, like, things that, like, you're like, that doesn't look right, that doesn't look real, and then, like, I started picking up on things. But it, you mentioned, like, in knowing, like, people are starting to wake up, and I think... It's like a snowball effect. Once you start opening up to things and realize, like, oh, that's fake, that was a lie, that's not proven, you start coming on more and more, and it's easier to see. So we have an upcoming episode, and we're going to talk about that. But I'm, like, looking at this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, look at this, and I'm pointing out all these things to you, and, like, I'm, like, showing you what's wrong with these pictures because I am the queen of finding flaws. You were picking up on stuff that I hadn't noticed yet. Oh my gosh, yeah. it was like so, and I'm like, what is, what is this? Like this, I was like, this has to be a joke because I'm like, this looks like bad Photoshop, <laughs> some of these pictures. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I invite everybody, I, again, I'm going to put the link in the show notes uh, so everybody can check it out as a primer to get ready yeah. because we have uh, scheduled in an upcoming episode um, somebody that I discovered on Twitter uh, and her Twitter handle is at Human Vibration. And she'll be uh, on to talk about uh, some of these things. And yes. very, very, very much looking forward to that conversation. Because when I say your mind's going to be blown, if you're open, uh, your mind's going to be blown if you're open to it. It's uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. But yeah. Yes. Um, but it just me. it's like a snowball effect. Like, yes. once you start picking up on these things, it's just... Yeah. You see more and more. Yeah. Once you see, you can't unsee it. That's, I mean, that's just how it is. Once your eyes are open, it's tough to go back to sleep. And, uh, I mean, personally, I don't know why you'd want to. But, uh, yeah, dinosaurs, complete nonsense, complete hokum, made up. Hogwash. Hoax, crap. In every sense of the word. Sorry to burst your bubble. I, it's, it, when you talk about just looking at things and what else is fake and what is my, I, I, I very rarely go on Twitter, but when I, uh, my pinned tweet on Twitter. It's all a work. It's all, in all caps, it's all a work. All, everything is a work. And I it's brought this up um, when I was talking to Leslie on her podcast. Uh -huh. And I was just saying how over a year ago, I just, I started waking up more and more and I felt like there's a spell put on us where they don't, it's an illusion. They want us to see the illusion. And it's like once you kind of 
see and you realize that there's so much illusion out there, people control what they want you to see. So that controls how you feel, how you think, how you react. It's like once you get there and realize it's just so much illusion, it's, you kind of have to go by, how do you feel? Like, I can feel this person's genuine. Or, okay, it's all BS. But it's just all illusion. You're right. It is all a work. It's all a work. I mean, I've I, been saying this. You've been <laughs> saying it for a long time. and Everything is a work. Yeah, just, just. And I brought up, like, for 2021 with Leslie, I was like, we, I brought it up in the previous episode where we talked about 2021 and my tarot predictions, but you got to let go. And part of that is you need to be able to let go. You can't be angry. Don't get upset. Just let go. Just let it go. And, okay, now I know it. Move forward. Yeah, that's the best way to be. I mean, I still fight with that <laughs> all the time because I do get, you know me, I get very... I'm I'm very uh, I'm very you know I, I have always you're looked, passionate. I'm very passionate. I've always looked for the truth. I I'm big on honesty and being mm -hmm. honest and everything. And I just I really I despise it when people lie to me. Uh, so for me, when I find out some of these truths, it's like, fuck, really? This whole time, this is what I've been thinking. This is what I've been led to believe. And it's it it can be very frustrating, uh, obviously, uh, when you come to these realizations. But I think you're right got to just kind of take it for what it is, and now that you know, go moving forward, look at everything through that lens of skepticism, yeah. because I think as people, unfortunately, it's in our nature to be trusting, to want to believe and look for the best, and when I say unfortunately, I mean because the powers that want to be, as you like to say, I which that. I love that, they take advantage of that. They take advantage of it, and it's it sucks. It sucks, but it's it's important. I think to just kind of question everything yeah. and put on that critical lens, you know, and and don't just accept something blindly because somebody told you told it to you. Don't accept what we're taking blindly because exactly. we're saying yeah, it. Yeah, don't just accept anything we say blindly. Do your own research. Exactly. So again, I, I I will put a bunch of links in the show notes. Everybody can check some of this stuff out for themselves and decide whether or not we're freaking crazy. Or maybe there's something to what we're saying and some of the ideas that we're sharing. Um, but yeah, definitely check out all that stuff. Yes. And there was something that came up yesterday, and I can't remember what it is now. So when I think of it, I'll let well, you know. Well, thanks for mentioning it. No, no, because I was like, is this the Mandela effect? And so I'll, I'm just like putting it oh, out there man. so I can try to remember. Because there was something I'm like, oh my God, wait a minute. I don't remember this happening like this. Is this a Mandela effect? So I'll... If I remember, I'll bring it up to you so we can talk about it on the show. Okay, yeah, the, man, the Mandela effect. I mean, jeez, there are so many Mandela effects now. It's insane. And so many more people are becoming aware of the Mandela effect. And it's just, it's nuts. It's nuts, but... Yeah, I think I was reading something and I'm like, um, wait a minute, I thought it was something else. And I'm just like, what? What? Okay, I'm like, this yeah. is going to be a Mandela effect. Yeah. And then I forgot about it. I forgot to tell you because I forget about things if I don't get it out. And so sure. I'll have to try to remember what it was. All right. Well, thank you for... We're going to have to revisit more Mandela Thanks for effects. bringing that up and not paying it off on the show. I'm sorry. I'm just saying we're going to have to talk about more of those. Like, oh, yeah. The there's, so, there's so many. Yeah. Yeah. Revisiting the Mandela effect, we'll definitely, we should probably definitely do that uh, coming up here soon. Um, but, yeah. Uh, do, do you have anything else about dinosaurs? Any other questions you want? I, I we went kind of all over the place, but again, it was just kind of one of those. Let's have a discussion, yeah, and let's talk. And as things come up, we'll we'll talk. Can you think of anything else as playing devil's advocate of why you think dinosaurs are real? I'm not saying you think that, but I'm saying from that viewpoint, I always try to do that. I try to play devil's advocate. And, and it's important to do that, too, because I, I think that's very important to do that, even if you truly believe something. I know it pisses people off sometimes. <laughs> look, yeah, look, Just but, saying it. Yeah, but I mean, look at the opposing viewpoint anyway, and just try to look at things objectively, yeah. just so you can determine, okay, well, what makes sense? What, what looks like it is more plausible? What looks like it would be more believable, more real? And it's funny that so many of these things, so many of these lies that were told throughout history... It's like the bigger the lie, it seems like the more easily we believe it, collectively as people. Almost like 
and I'm not a psychology major or anything, but think I, I almost think that it's like the more crazy it is, the more likely we're to be like, well, yeah, it's got to be real because it's so crazy. Like, who would make that up? Yeah. It's almost like a reverse psychology or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, dinosaurs are bullshit. That's, uh, that's the end of my... Uh, and there you have it. <laughs> and, and I know there's a bunch of stuff I know that I missed that I didn't, that I didn't talk about. Uh, in we can talk about it more in another In relation episode, to yeah. my, my thesis that this is all crap and it's all made up. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll revisit this again. We'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what our watchers and our hearers... Yeah. have to say about this. What do you guys think? We'll see how many people we piss off, how many people we hopefully wake up and get to thinking, yeah. uh, even if they don't come over to this side of the of the camp. And and I, I don't even, I, I shouldn't even say that because I don't want people to it's pick sides. It's not about sides. It's not about picking yeah. It's about just opening your mind and thinking more. Yeah. Uh, that's it. You want If you want to believe they were real, great. If you want to believe they were bullshit, great. If you want to fall somewhere in the middle of I don't know, but okay. both sides make a very interesting argument, great. Just think. Think more. Yeah. We just, just got to think more. That's yeah. all it is. That's all I want. Expand your thoughts. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I'll throw out uh, Etsy shop. Wonders by Monique. You can get a tarot reading, oracle readings. You can get organite, candles, homemade incense. I made another different type of incense yesterday, and I've been burning it in smells so good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell that one. I might just <laughs> keep it for me. Yeah, it, 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 it does smell really good. I know. It was, yeah, very uh, good. Yeah. Even after when it was done burning and stuff. Oh, I think God. there was some that would, like your your uh, your sweater yeah. smelled like, like it. My, it like, like, I, it really good. like with the herbs, I use my hands to like break it up and I put intention in. Um, sometimes I'll put it like in a coffee grinder to get the texture I want, but I do everything at first with my hands and I put that intention in my hands just like smelled like fresh herbs and it smelled so good. So, um, I have incense. I have all different kinds of things and I'm also an ordained minister. If you want to get married, let me know. I can officiate your wedding and yeah, tarotbymonique.com and my Etsy shop is Wonders by Monique. Check it out. Yes, and of course, if you want to reach out to us with your thoughts, uh, any of your theories, you want to call us crazy, you want to tell us we're awesome, hopefully the latter, but you know, we'll take whatever, it's fine. Uh, you can reach us on social media. We are on Twitter. At Homewrecker Pod. And Minds. Minds. Is it at Homewrecker Pod? I think Homewrecker Podcast or at Home. Let me oh, look. Wow. Now I forgot. It's new. Wow. This is new for me. Look at that. Look at that. It is Home that. Record Podcast. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we have a website as well. HomeRecordPodcast.com. That's right. And, and we're on YouTube. YouTube. Right Radeon on. and BitChute. Yes. We're still having issues up getting everything uploaded. It doesn't always process. So. Where? On, on BitChute. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I might just do... Um, Whatever didn't upload, I've tried multiple times to get these videos up. So I may just start from where it started. So. All right. I don't, I don't think everybody needs to know how the sausage is made here. On the just show. in case people are wondering where the other episodes were. Fair enough. That's all. Okay. Well, you can find all the episodes on homeworkpodcast.com. Yes. And what about you? AlexAreonFitness.com. I'm on Twitter at the Alex Arion, but I very rarely tweet. Very rarely. Uh, I may start going back on there again. Uh, I just, I, I feel like when I go on social media, I just tend to get sucked in. And I just, I don't, I, I feel like it's just a big time If suck. you're on Twitter, just go to Homework or Pod and go to our Homework send a message, and I'll tell Alex. Fair enough. And he'll get in touch with you. But, but if, yes, fair enough. But if you want to find me on Twitter, I am at the Alex Arion. And uh, the website is alexarionfitness.com, so check that out as well. And I'll say my Twitter because we don't have Instagram. Um, no I'm more at, Instagram. No more. I'm at underscore Monique Giselle underscore, and that's my Twitter. There you go. Awesome. And you can find all that information on our website, homeworkerpodcast.com. There it is. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we'll put everything in the show notes. Yeah. So, until next time, dinosaurs are bullshit. I am the Golden Greek Alexarion. Been joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, Monique. And you've been listening to the Homewrecker Podcast.